Hello and welcome back to Fish Bites Devlog. Um, it's January 24th. Wanted to make a update on where we stand um, with the uh, simulation here I'm developing. Um, so over the last few days, I've been focused on trying to introduce sound into the simulation to make it a little more pleasing to watch. Um, and um, the uh, kind of interesting, not irony, but interesting, helpful coincidence is that, as I mentioned in a previous um, episode of this, I've kind of been torn between uh, this project and another project that I started a long time ago, gotten interested in, in again here recently. And um, so that new project is a, is a musical application I'm building. So what's interesting about this coincidence is that turns out I've been able I was able to appropriate a lot of the code and concepts from my uh, the other app I'm working on and bring them into um, into Fish Bites, which um, is helpful. It's not an instantaneous fix, um, but it was kind of a good starting point. Um, and uh, from that point, uh, then I was able to go in and, and, and edit it really kind of simplify it quite a bit from what the other app has, but to make it more useful here in Fish Bites. So I'm going to talk here a little bit about um, kind of what, uh, what what I brought in for my other application and what the idea here is for uh, making sound in Fish Bites. So first, I want to just uh, share some of the ideas I had around what, what I want the sound to be like um, in Fish Bites. Um, my first point is I want it to sound musical and relaxing. So the whole one of the points of the application is that you can just sit there and watch the fish. Um, so if there's going to be sound, it's got to be relaxing sound, not irritating or obnoxious or anything. So kind of mellow. Uh, I want it to be kind of relaxing um, and musical in some way or other. Um, and part of the idea of being musical is the second point where I want notes uh, to be played um, rhythmically on a beat. So that in a sense, there is a beat of, the, of a song that's playing, but the notes that you're hearing are coming from the fish. Um, and they're playing in beat, in rhythm. So it's not just random chaos. Um, so to make it sound musical, I wanted it to, the notes that are going to be included need to somehow blend with each other. And... Um, the first thing, I'm gonna, my first attempt here is going to be to use a um, an A minor seven and nine chord. Um, so I thought maybe I would use an A minor seven chord, A minor seven add nine. So what is that? That's on the on a piano. If you want to play those notes on a piano, it'd be an A C E G B, all white notes. Um, a C E together is an A minor. Then you include that G natural onto gives you an A minor 7, and then you include that B natural, and that gives you an add 9. Um, so, <clears throat> that hopefully will give it kind of a a pleasant tone of some sort. If I decide that doesn't work well, I might go to a more pentatonic kind of approach. Maybe use just the black notes on a piano, which are essentially the same notes you often hear in uh, wind chimes. Um, so there's kind of a pleasing uh, sound to those notes together. So that's the second alternative if this chord doesn't work out the way I hope it will. Um, next point. Next, notes only sound when fish is within the camera's collider. Okay, so that's yeah, that's a basic idea. Um, so the camera, obviously, in the simulation, can move around. It can be centered or it can follow a fish around. Um, and I want the camera to be the listening device. So a fish that's close enough to the camera, you'll be able to hear sounds coming from it. But a fish that's way across the way, you're not going to hear that. So as fish get close, you're going to hear them. Um, so eventually I hope to take the sound listening collider that I've created and attach it to the camera and have it follow the camera around. Um, that's the plan. Um, in relation to that, nearness to the camera increases the volume of the note. So if a fish is closer to the camera, it's going to be louder. As it swims away, it's going to get quieter. Um, the next idea 
is that the fish the, the fish vol fish's velocity determines the duration of the notes, um, and by duration I mean, is it a, a half note, a quarter note, a, s a eighth note, or a sixteenth note? So if if it's uh, traveling faster, the duration is going to be shorter. So in other words, the fastest a fish can go will be like a sixteenth note, and that's going to be so. If, if you listen, think about it in terms of music, a sixteenth note is going to play a lot more more quickly. So a fish is going to go. Dit, 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 dit. Where fish is traveling slowly, it's going to be dit, 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 kind of a much slower kind of a note. Um, and all those notes that are going to fall on the beats of the, um, of the music is the plan. So it should be musical, therefore, hopefully, at least some kind of rhythmic. So a fast fish is going to hit, hit, hit a lot faster, and a slower fish is going to be more, more slow. Um, other concepts here. The idea is that the, fish, uh, the fish's hue, its color, will determine what note it plays of the five notes I want to use. So I'm not sure what color is going to play what note yet, but that's kind of the idea. <clears throat> right now the colors of the fish run the full spectrum of hues from 0 to 360, I think is how Unity treats it. Or you can think of it as from 0 to 1. I'm going to need to parse that, parse that hue scale up in some kind of strategic way so that it breaks it up into the five areas for these five different notes. Um, and the last idea is that if the fish size will determine what octave of the note plays. So I want to have little tiny fish playing high little high pitched notes and big fish are going to play lower more booming kind of notes. Um, so that's kind of the overarching principles I'm trying to uh, design principles I'm trying to apply here uh, for implementing sound into um, fish bites. So as I mentioned earlier um, the idea was to have a uh, something a, a collider attached to the camera that's going to listen for fish essentially. So you'll notice what I've added to the um, application here is kind of a light blue circle in the center there. That is the uh, sound listening collider. Um, it's got a circle image on it. I'm going to blank that image out um, eventually, but for now I'm going to leave that kind of colored in uh, while I'm testing to be sure that a fish that enters that circle starts sending notes to the um, to the sound system. And when a note leaves that circle, it should stop sending notes to the sound system. So that's kind of the idea here. OK, so within, within the fish script, I need to have the fish know um, how fast it's going and therefore what kind of notes it should try to be playing. So I've got a real simple script here called set sound speed level where I look at the velocities of the fish and um, decide what the sound speed level should be. I'm actually using um, I'm using squared velocities here because that makes it, it that means it's going to be faster. I can use the RB velocity square magnitude, which I think should be faster, not, not needing to take the, the square root of the uh, vectors to get that velocity. So maybe a little bit faster is the idea there by using square. So as I compare these, um, I'm starting out with the uh, slowest fish first. If it's in the, um, if the speed of the fish is in the slowest 25% of the max velocity possible, it will make that fish play half notes, so much slower. And then um, if it's um, else, if it's like within the lower half, in other words, the second second quartile is going to be a four, play quarter notes. The next quartile is going to, next fastest quartile is going to be two, which corresponds to eighth notes. And the sound speed level for one is going to be um, for 16th notes. Those are the fastest fish in the fastest 25% of the speed uh, range that a fish can travel, going from zero to the max velocity. <clears throat> Uh, let me think about this for a minute. I wonder if this, uh, yeah, this, I was going to say it's a square here messing up by the fact that I'm dividing it, but no, I don't think so because we're just comparing squares. At that point, it doesn't know what it's comparing. So that's um, that's how we set the speed level within the fish so the fish knows what kind of notes it should be trying to play. All right, so on the fish, um, there's an on trigger, enter 2D, where I'm going to pick up when the fish crosses into the trigger, which is the uh, sound listening um, uh, collider. Uh, the collision detection here, if that does, if that collider does have a, a tag on it called sound listener, then I know this is a sound listener that it's collided with. Um, 
if near camera equals false, near camera is a is a bool, and it sets to true if the fish is within the collider of the the sound listener. So, if near camera is true, the fish should be transmitting notes to the um, sound listener, so the sound listener can play those notes. So if it's not, uh, if if it was just collided here, it's going to set the near camera to true, and it's going to set the sound speed level for this fish. Because that needs to change, because the fish could be slowing down and speeding up. So I need to set the sound speed level, you know, fairly often. Um, so that's what happens when it first enters into the um, sound listener. It sets the near camera to true, and that near camera equals true is what's going to trigger the sending of the notes, but that's in a different location. Um, next, we have the um, similar kind of script here. <clears throat> what happens when the fish leaves the listener? Well, then I set near camera equals to false. And what that does is that later in other parts of the code, that's going to say this fish should not be transmitting notes to the sound listener anymore. Okay, so where does that happen? So at first I put this piece of the code in the fixed update. That's what happens that handles the physics of the fish. I decided I wanted the sound um, updating to be a little more real time than that. So I put it into an update. So right now the only thing I have going on in my update script for the fish is just this check for the sound business. Um, what does it do here? Well, if it um, if it finds that the fish is near the camera, then um, it's going to try to go on from there. It's going to then say if sent note is true, then do some things. Um, so basically, what we want to have this do, we want to have the fish send a note to the sound listener, but not a million of them, and fill up the list of notes that need play. We want it to send it for each beat, for each tick of the music. We want each fish to send a sound to the listener one time, so it will play one time. That's what's happening right here. That's what this sent note is about. So sent note equals false. Um, if sent note equals false, then it's going to try to send a note to the sound listener. Um, it's got this thing called tick counter and tick counter is going to start at zero and it's going to count up every time it goes through this code um, this is what's going to prevent the thing from just sending um, sending a note every 16th note it's going to like have to count up so if the speed level is 8 then this tick counter is going to have to go up to it's from 0 to 8 um, before it's going to send it and when it does then it resets the tick counter to 0 so if it's 16th notes, this thing's going to just fire every time. The tick counter is 0, then it becomes 1, checks the speed level, what it should be, to, if it needs to change it or not. And then um, <clears throat> if the tick counter, I probably should say greater than or equal, in case it speeds up. <clears throat> then it's going to send that note, and it's going to re reset the tick counter back to 0. Um, well, I'm glad I caught that. So if this fish is changing speed, um, it could theoretically skip over um, the tick that it's supposed to play at. And when it does, um, when it does match, or it's over this, it'll reset tick counter, but it also does a send note to one shot. So what that does is that sends the note from the fish to the one shot player, which is playing the audio as a one shot. So it's like um, in Unity, a one shot is like when you pull a trigger, it fires the, the sound of a gun. It's a um, not a looping sound but a one-shot playing of a sound file. That's what we want to have happen here. Essentially right now I have it set to a bubbly sort of sound, like an underwater bubble kind of sound, but we might change that over time. Um, but once it sends that, um, it resets the sent note to true. And that, so the next time coming through here, it's going to say, it's going to run this part of the code. Sent note is true. Um, it's going to like keep in this loop over, uh, over and over again on the update. Until, S, until the um, just played note is true. Just played note is what the one shot player plays when it actually plays all the notes for that particular beat of the music. I know this is, this, I feel like this is confusing, but um, so when the sound player plays all the notes for a particular beat, then there's like a, a one frame lull where it will go back to here and it'll set this back to false. So then it can start, start trying to think about if it should send a note yet or not. 
Um, <clears throat> I might need to reset the tick counter to zero in the um, on enter business. Um, it may not matter um, because any subsequent notes that it plays will be on the beat. So uh, I'll have to think about that for a little bit. All right, next we have send note to one shot. This is where the fish is going to send a note to the uh, the sound player, essentially. How does it do that? Well, it, it accesses one shots through the ecosystem uh, script, that way, it, uh, which the fish already has a tie into the ecosystem. So it can play this, it can run this method from one shots via the ecosystem script. So in the one shots script, there's a, a method called add new note to playlist. So we're just adding one note from this fish to the playlist. So the next time the tick, next time time reaches the next tick of the song, it'll play this note along with any other notes that it receives. So what is it sending there? Zero is, uh, I'm trying to think what these values are. I'll look, look at the one shot to find out what those are. So let's do that now. So here's the add new note to playlist that's in the one shot script. And uh, I've got some, this is craziness down here below from the uh, other my other project, um, but, uh, but but essentially all it's doing is this. Um, it's, there's a list called notes to play list that exists for each tick of the of the beat, <clears throat> and after it's played all those notes, it clears that list out and rebuilds a list of new notes to play the next tick of the beat. Um, so that's why we're adding a note to play here. And note to play is a little uh, a simple class that has a few items in it. Uh, for one, it's got the tone tone sound, so that's going to say what audio file to play. And this could be different for different kinds of fish. So I haven't decided if I'm going to use that or not. But for now, I'm using a single sound. Um, pitch is going to be used later on when a fish is smaller or larger. The pitch will be different, and the volume also will be uh, different based on the location of the fish in relation to the distance to the camera. Um, but for right now, I'm just sending, um, if you'll notice, I'm just sending um, nothing too special there. I'm just sending um, th the tone sound uh, array is zero. Pitch is one, so it's going to be just the raw pitch of the existing sound clip. And the volume is a half. Um, why am I sending the volume as a half? I'm not sure. I think just so it doesn't make it too loud. But uh, we'll talk about that here more in a minute. In the update script for one shot, that's where the one shot sound player is listening or is checking to see when should it play the next notes. What's when is the next beat of the song going to happen? And when that hits, it needs to play all those notes from that list that we built of notes to play. So that's what it's doing right here. Um, if uh, just played notes is false, in other words, it didn't just play a note. That's going to happen down here. Um, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, what it does is it checks the time, the audio settings, uh, DSP time, and see how does that compare to the next click time. Uh, the next click time is going to keep increasing as we go. Every time we play a new set of notes, we increase the next click time to say when the next notes are going to be played. Uh, so when we have reached that point, it's time to play the notes. So the first thing we do before we play the note is we're going to update the next click time to the next time we play it. And I think I've got a, I think I found a, a little bug here um, because the next click time is going to be the current next click time plus seconds between the next tick, and then I'm multiplying that by the by the slowdown factor for the time slider of the simulation. But this is all about velocity of the fish. So the fish you're going to slow down when you slow the slider down. That's going to change the speed of the um, of how often they play. Well, that velocity is based on the relative velocity of the fish to the other fish and to their max velocity. We'll have to think about this. Should I include this slowdown factor here or not? Um, I think I do want to because even though the, the apparent velocity of the fish are slowing down in the simulation, Everything is going to slow down, so I think we want the music to slow down too. 
I think this will prevent the uh, will be required to make the music slow down. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I'll have to think about that a little more. But um, once that happens, then we do um, this play notes from playlist. That's where it's going to play all the notes that were added to the playlist since the last tick. Um, so we'll look at that in a second. Uh, then we have this just played notes is set to true. What that does is that send, that, that essentially triggers all the fish scripts to say, okay, it just played the notes that I sent. So now if I'm still in the collider, I should send a new note uh, for the next tick. Um, notice that this played notes uh, true is only true for one frame because the next time through the update, it's going to do this method right here, where if it's true, it's going to flip it back to false. So for one frame, it signals the fish, you can resend it, um, then it sets it back to false. By setting it back to false, that sets it back up to here where next time through the update, it's going to start listening, it's going to start checking the time again to see is it time to play the note yet or not. So what does this play notes from playlist, what does that look like? That's right down here. Um, <clears throat> what it's going to do is it's going to loop through all the notes that are in the notes to play list. It's going to loop through all of those. And uh, we'll talk about this here in just one second, this little breakout. Uh, what it's going to do for each of those notes is it's going to run a method that's in the sound script, which is actually going to play the uh, audio file for that particular note, given the tone sound, which is the um, which uh, which sound to play. Right now, I just have one sound, um, and the pitch and the volume, which which will change. I also need to add in panning here because I want the when the fish is to the left of the camera, I want it to be the sound to be panned left. When it's to the right, I want the sound to be pa uh, panned to the right in the stereo field. So that'll be kind of cool. I need to implement that yet though too. Um, so a lot to a lot to add here. So let's take a look at the sound play play tone. What does that look like in um, the sound script? Oh before, oh, before we do that, I should talk about this part right here. What is this business? Max number of audio sources. So um, uh, Unity has a limit. I think it's 32 audio sources. And I'm afraid to use 32 for fear that might bog things down. Right now, I'm just, I've got my max number of audio sources set to 10. What that means is we're only going to hear 10 sounds maximum at a time. So even if there's 20 fish within the sound listener, I'm only going to hear 10 of those. So the notes to playlist could be bigger than 10, or whatever my maximum is. Um, but um, uh, so notice what it's doing there. The, the number of the uh, sound in the playlist, I'm using that same index to, ref to grab myself an audio source. This first number right here, I, this is saying, what audio source am I going to play this tone on? And it's just going to be the number of that particular whatever it is. So, if the max aud if the max number of audio sources is ten, but I've got fifteen notes to play on the playlist, it's only going to play the first ten, and then it's going to stop because it's run out of audio sources. So, um, what that allows me to do is I'll be able to change the static variable max number of audio sources. I can experiment with that and change it from ten to fifteen to twenty to thirty to see if it's too much sound confusion to see if it sounds good doing that. Um, to see if it has performance issues, um, but I can play with all that using that global variable there. So if it has maxed out where there's no more audio sources left to play, it's going to break out of this loop and stop playing through the um, the notes on the list. And once it's played all those notes on the list, then we're going to clear that list out so we can start adding new notes to it for the next tick. All right, now I'm looking at the uh, sound script that uh, one note shot cause this play tone from it. And my sound script's got a, a fair number of uh, different kind of methods in it from the fact that I was using it in my other uh, sound and musical application I'm working on. But the main one we're going to use right here is this one. And notice what it's looking for. It's looking for the audio source index. Um, temp tone sound will be just uh, zero for now, but I could add more, more fish sounds to this if I want different fish to play different kinds of, kinds of sounds. Um, also, the pitch and the volume are sent right here. Um, to set the pitch of a um, sound, I need to go into the audio source and set the pitch value there. So here's my audio source. Um, 
So ASM is a shortcut to my audio source manager script. And so for audio source, um, in this case, whatever I was, it's going to set the pitch for that. And then the, the final piece of the puzzle right here is where it actually plays the sound. So the audio source has a play one shot script built onto it in, um, in Unity. And it needs to know what's this audio source, um, or what's, this, what's the, t the, the audio clip to play is given by this, which fish sound it is fish sound zero in this case and it also wants to know the volume so the volume is sent here but if I play five notes and the temp volume is a half for all of them well I'm gonna be adding all those uh, sound waves on top of each other and it's gonna like uh, it's gonna it's gonna distort because it's gonna be over uh, a gain of zero um, Or I guess I could say, I guess I could call it, if, if zero is, if zero has, if volume has, you can't hear it at all, the volume is zero. One is the max volume you can possibly hear through your speakers. Um, imagine you have uh, five audio clips all playing at one. Well, now you've got five for the volume level trying to play out. It's going to distort. Um, it's going to clip and sound probably terrible in your speakers. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to take that volume and divide it by the max number of audio sources <clears throat> that are present, that are present in this in the system. So, in case everything is full volume and is trying to play all ten sounds at full volume, I'm going to divide that by ten so that it will be just one will be the total volume there, so I can prevent clipping that way. So, um, so if you have only one fish playing in there, you might need to turn the volume up a bit on your speaker so you can hear it well. Um, but the idea being, well, you, if you have 10 fish in there, well, now you're going to be hearing a lot of sound, and it's going to be full volume at that point. The last thing I'll say about this is, how can I do this division? This is a float. Max number of audio sources is an integer when it's in the, um, in the, the static variable is an integer. Um, so earlier in the sound, uh, in, the, in, the, in the awake, in the start, in the start method for uh, this, this app, or this app, um, script I'm setting a variable uh, local to this script it's actually a float variable max number of audio sources um, and it's getting it's, it's converting the integer global to a float so now I can do this this float uh, float to float division real quick and easy um, every frame so that hopefully will speed it up not needing to convert an int to a float every time here I think might save me some time so that's kind of how that works and one last thing about the code, um, like I mentioned before, I've got an audio source manager script, and uh, it doesn't do a whole lot, but um, pretty important. And a good trick that I learned somewhere from some video, I forget where exactly, was to uh, have the, your audio sources um, as an array. As you can see, we're declaring it at the top of the screen right there, max number of audio sources. And then in the awake method, it's going to create those and it creates those audio sources by instantiating a an audio source prefab which I've created it doesn't matter the position um, but I'm gonna put that in a audio source folder to keep things clean that's what this line does and then I name the audio source but most importantly I create a link to that audio source in this audio sources array right here um, so then I can access it later on. All right, so now that we've talked, I think, through about everything, um, let's see how this works. Now, th now, keep this in mind. Right now, all we're doing is when a fish enters that light blue circle there, it's going to send a note to the sound player based on its speed. So we should hear rhythm rhythms should be coming from the fish, but there's no pitch variation yet. There's no volume variation yet. There's really nothing very interesting going on yet, except for the rhythms. So let's see if we're hearing rhythms coming through there. Okay, so I made some changes to the scripts and decided to recompile them while this uh, simulation was still running. And it's done my uh, the nice little trick that it seems to do where it turns all my fish into Sith fish. We are hearing some sounds though. Um, I think those are coming through on the recording. So let me uh, let this thing recompile and we'll give it another try here. 
Okay, now to demonstrate, I've uh, reduced the number of fish down to seven to start with. They might start. Okay, but I think we're hearing uh, sounds from these fish already. Um, uh, he's going slow. So we're hearing a tick, but very slow. The purple came in, he's going faster. Maybe he's going max speed, I'm not sure. Once he leaves the circle, you stop hearing him. Let's change the time scale up and see if that changes the rhythm of the, the, the song. Oh yeah, that fast fish is, is really coming through fast. That little purple guy right there coming through. What if we slow the time scale down? What do we get? So anyway, um, we can't, it's hard to distinguish um, them because the sounds are all the same based on the colors, but um, the pitches will be, will be changed based on the color eventually. But I think this was the hardest part, was getting the rhythmic part to be accurate. And it seems to be working okay. So I'm pretty pleased with where it is so far. I think the hardest part is done, adding in pitches, um, panning, uh, I don't think it'll be too difficult. Um, yeah, I think, I think from here on out it should be pretty quick going. So I'm going to close this video out here and uh, we'll um, update you when I've got the uh, rest of the audio all set up. So if you've watched this far, I uh, really appreciate it. It's been kind of long and detailed, uh, kind of slow going, but uh, I wanted to just share with you the uh, how, uh, how this came about. So um, thanks for watching and uh, I'll talk to you soon.